Today's video is the first in a series where I'm going to paint the main player characters in the Assassin's Creed board game. It's about time. And also take a look at each Assassin's backstory, sculpts, and skills and rank them from the best to the worst using an extremely scientific and rigorous point system. Where everything's made up and the points don't matter. First up, we have Claudio and right away, I'm happy that his scalp is rather clean with not too many more lines for me to remove. I remove what more lines I find by scraping it off with a model knife and where required, I use a file as well to get into some of the harder to reach areas. Once he's all cleaned up, I prime the model in black and then proceed to use the airbrush to give him a zenithal highlight, building up the layers from somber grey, gradually mixing in Raka flesh and lastly, finally building it up all the way to off-white. Although the priming has done a pretty good job in providing base highlights and shadows, I want to accentuate them a little bit more using the brush. When I paint character models, I like to focus on them one at a time and take a little more time with them. I also paint them in a much more fluid way and to do that, I prepare these three colours which I'll be mixing to achieve the shadows and highlights that I need. It's difficult to provide exact colour recipes for each step as I mix it the colour based on what looks and feels right. After applying shades, I start building up the highlights again and work towards achieving my goal of getting this warm white cloth texture. While I slowly build up the layers and work on the white, let's talk a little bit about Claudio's backstory. Claudio was the son of a spice merchant who lived on the planet Arrakis and- Oh, oh wait, what? Not that spice? Okay, uh... So he was the son of a spice merchant in Venice, and because of his dark skin tone was often mistaken for a slave. Okay, I guess there's not too much there, and racial profiling is just not that interesting to me, but you know, points for making me think about Dune. After a while of working the white, I reach a point where I kind of want to start working on other parts of the model to get a better idea of how the model will look overall. When painting single models, I often also bounce from one part to another to gradually fill in the colours and get a sense of how the colours will work together. Next, we will paint in his pants and for that, we will use Incubi Darkness which is this kind of very nice dark blue-green colour. For his boots, I'm going to be using Will Wood which is a very nice dark brown that is suitable for painting leather details. I actually wanted to paint it using Rhinox Hide like I did with Abzio but my paint pot went dry and I had to improvise. For the red trim, I will be using Chaotic Red as a base coat. I initially wanted to use the Will Wood as a base but after testing it out, I felt the colour was too dark and I wanted the red to be a little bit more vibrant. With that, we'll be moving to the next feature which is his rather unique dark skin tone and to paint that, I'm going to use Willwood as a base, mixing in a bit of the chaotic red to get a bit more warmth to the colour. Again, I'm improvising here because of my dead paint pot but I think the contrast paint does help to bring out the features a little bit. With most of the base colours on, I'm starting to get a sense of how the white looks and realise that I need to bring back the vibrancy of the white and that's why I'm really thankful to have a wet palette which makes it easy for me to switch between colours without worrying about the paint drying out too quickly. So for this, I'm mostly using off-white mix with a little bit of Raka Flash to bring the colour back up. Moving on, I use Will Wood to paint the leather features on his body such as the hidden blade gauntlet as well as his leather belt and pouches. At the same time, I also use the Will Wood to add a little shading to his face, painting in the shadows under his chin. I then also carefully paint in the pin stripes on his pants using off-white. I'm now going to start painting the metal details using an NMM method and aside from the elegant rapier which totally reminds me of a certain sexy swash button, I also come across this little hidden blade in his right hand. Okay, how cool is that? I love this subtle reference to his skills in the game which all revolve around specialised use of the hidden blade. And I don't know about you, but to me, the character that specialises in the most iconic assassin weapon is definitely the coolest assassin. Incredible! Another really cool feature of the model that I love is his pendant which aside from being totally bling bling, it's also a very powerful item which you can find in the course of the campaign. Now I begin to work on his face and I highlight it using Steel Legion Dread. I also use black to add some more shadows to his face and also painted his hair as well as his facial hair. 
I then come back to touch up the metal portions and to make them stand out, I add more white in as point highlights to really draw attention to them. To finish off the rapier, I'll paint the hilt using an NMM gold method and I start off by painting the entire area in wheel wood. While that dries, I stipple the leather areas using steel legion drab and later with ushapti bone. This might seem too light right now, but with a wash later, it will all come together and provide a very nice looking texture. As the contrast paint is taking a while to dry, I start prepping the base by painting it with a layer of Ushap tea bone. I also give the red trim a little bit of a highlight using Blood Angel's red first, and then adding in a little bit of Ushap tea bone to bring up the brightness, but trying not to let the red turn too pink. I then add some final highlights into the face using Ushapti Bone mixed with Steel Legion Dread. We are now ready to finish off the gold and then and I'm going to do this in a little bit of a rough and ready way. First, I paint most of the surfaces with bronze flesh tone to establish the mid-tone, leaving out the crevasses. I then highlight these areas using bronze flesh tone mixed with a little bit of off-white to sketch out the reflective points on the metal. Then I wash the darker areas using a little bit of wheel wood and just painting in the lower areas and you can see we have already quickly achieved a very reasonable gold NMM effect. We are almost done with the model and as a final touch up I use off-white to accentuate the spot highlights in all parts of the model including the clothes as well as all the NMM portions. Last but not least, we will finish up the base with our usual soft tone and green tone washes followed by a quick dry brush to bring out the textures. Instead of black lining, however, we are going to paint the bezels in Claudio's character colour green and with that, Claudio is ready to join the Assassin's Guild. Claudio is my favourite assassin and the character I choose to play in our games. His scalp is super solid and dapper complete with bling and I'm especially loving the little hidden blade in his right hand. Skills wise, he has a great balance between offensive power and stealth and is such a flexible piece of the game. So even though he is the first assassin we've painted, I definitely think he'll be taking one of the top spots among the characters but we'll see. Let me know who your favourite assassin is in the comments below and stay tuned for the next episode in the series.